So applications of integration day one flip to that page. What? Yeah. Okay, so it says to find the area under the curve of y equals x squared from x equals 1 to x equals 5. So what we're saying here is we've got this shape and it does y equals x squared. And I want the area from x equals 1 to x equals 5. How do I do that? Oh, okay, under the curve means between curve and x-axis. So how do I get that area? Okay. The antiderivative of x squared dx, and we're going to do it from 1 to 5. Okay, so now you have two choices. If this is a no calculator question, what are you going to do? Riley, what's up? I don't know, because I'm an idiot and I can't draw. There, it's almost better. So if this is a no calculator question, how are you going to do it? Okay, so take the antiderivative. I can put the plus C there, but you don't need it because when you subtract, it cancels. Put 5 in for X, put 1 in for X. How else could you do this? Why did I ask you to get a graphing calculator? I know, but I said, I said, how else could you do it? So y equals x squared, second trace, antiderivative, 1, enter, 5, enter, and lo and behold, the area is 41.3 repeating. You should get the same answer no matter how you do it. Or we could build rectangles, but you know what, I'm really lazy. I wouldn't want to do that. Okay, find the area of the under the curve from y equals 1 over... No? the antiderivative of 1 over x. Good. So you could write it as ln5 minus ln1. Use your log rules. So it's just ln5. Out there in brackets, this is what does it mean to take a slice? You gotta, what it's referring back to is stuff that we did in chapter five that that each each little rectangular area can be defined by using a length f of x and a width dx. That's all it is. Okay. That's all it's referring to. Because each little area can be represented, or each little rectangle, or each tiny little, infinitely tiny little line can be represented with a length of f of x and a width of dx. Right. Um, find the area bounded by y equals secant squared x, x equals 0, x equals pi over 4, and y equals 0. So now we're starting to put some boundaries on things here. So x equals 0, 
x equals pi over 4, I don't know, right there, 0, pi over 4, and y equals 0. Now, secant squared. Hmm. Of course, I graph that really well. No, I don't. Um, secant's 1 over cos. So cos looks like... Cos looks like this. I have a 4. Whatever. Cos looks like... I can't draw. Coast like that. Coast looks like that between zero and pi over two. Yeah. So that's zero one, and that one's zero one over root two. So you reciprocate and you square those numbers, and you get. Not that you need to do this, but I guess I'm doing it for kicks and giggles. Um, it looks like this. It doesn't even matter if you graph it. I guess it helps. So we're going to take the antiderivative from, that's it's not 0, it's pi over 4. I'm going to take the antiderivative from 0 to pi over 4 of secant squared x dx. No, because when you reciprocate and square. Because secant would go through pi over 4, one root 2 over 1. Secant squared would go through pi over 4, root 2 over 1 squared. But if you don't believe me, Anyways, does this even matter? No, it doesn't even matter because, because you know what secant looks like. So secant squared's just got to be the same kind of thing, just a little bit steeper at the edges. Uh, Antiderivative secant tan. So it's tan x zero to pi over four. So you're gonna go tan of pi over four minus or plus c minus tan of pi over four. Sorry. Tan of zero plus c. But do you need to do tan of zero? Like, well, yeah, you do. But I mean, stop and think about what. I'm asking you to think about your special triangles. What's tan of pi over four? One. So you got one plus c minus tan of zero. Zero. Zero minus c. So you're left with one. How do you do it if you don't believe me? One divided by cos x squared. Second trace seven. Zero enter pi over four. If you don't believe me, you can always check your work with this. Okay, between e to the x, x equals zero, x equals ln four, and y equals zero. E to the x looks like this sort of, x equals 0, right there, x equals ln 4, I don't know, right there, and y equals 0. So what are you going to do? Now what? Now what? 
three. Woohoo! Got an area of three. We good? The strap, this is pretty repetitive. Yeah. Hard? No. Okay, so now we're starting to re amp up the level of difficulty. Well, not so much yet. Find the finite area bounded by the curve. Y equals X cubed minus minus three axis. So we need to graph this to get an understanding of what it means. X minus two X. Is it two X squared? Minus three. Find the finite area bounded by the curve and the x-axis. Okay, so it's create, it says find the area, find the area between the x-axis and the curve. So it's, bounded means enclosed by or contained by. So we have two antiderivatives to find. Or we have one antiderivative to do twice. So, we need to find the yellow area, and we need to find the blue area. Okay, this is not net area, this is total area kind of thinking. So how do we get the yellow area? Good. Find the zeros. Now, if, we're, if I'm giving this to you algebraically, and this is a no calculator question, one's going to have to factor a common term. And then factor the trinomial that's left over. Yeah? But if it's not, if it's not factorable, then you're going to have to use the zero command on your calculator. Yeah? Okay, so to find the area, yellow area, we're going to do the antiderivative between where and where. Negative one and zero. Good. And use the original function because it's easier to take the antiderivative of something that is all multiplied out than something that is written as a product of three terms you haven't even talked about how do you undo products without multiplying. We did a little bit about on new substitution, but there's a whole other section on something called integration by parts, which is really about how you pull apart products. Okay, so. And I was gonna do that with those people that are writing the UBC exam after the May 4th U AP exam because you need to do it for the UBC exam. So, but I was figuring I wouldn't want to pound that into everybody else's heads. Okay, so take the antiderivative of that. Well, that's 1 fourth x to the 4 minus 2 thirds x cubed minus 3 x squared over 2 plus c. What? Yeah, you don't need to put the plus C. It's just a good habit for your chapter 6 test. Now, the nice thing is, is we already know what the answer to the first part is. Over 2. Yeah, but... When you sub zero in, what are you going to get? Zero. Okay, so let's use that kind of thinking to skip all those steps. So you get zero minus, that's one fourth, that's plus two thirds. And that's minus 3, 2. 
twelfths, three twelfths plus eight twelfths. Yeah, I will after. I'm just getting a common denominator and adding it all together in my head. Scary? No? Good. 3 twelfths plus 8 twelfths minus 18 twelfths. 3 plus 8 minus 18. Negative 7. So negative 7 twelfths, flip the sign, the answer is 7 twelfths positive. So we've done the yellow area. Okay, how do you do the blue area? Same thing. The nice thing is there's a whole bunch of symmetry in the question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you better believe it. Just what are your bounds of integration? You're going to go from 0 to 3. Blah dx equals one fourth times three to the fourth minus two thirds times three cubed minus three twos times three squared plus c minus zero. So Oh, 3 to the power of 4 is 81. So you get 81 over 4 minus 18 over 3. No, 18. Minus 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. 27 over 2. And when you do that, you get negative 11 and 1 fourth, or negative 11, negative 11.25. Okay, so it says find the total area. Yeah, switch the negative 11.25 into a positive and add it to the 7 twelfths. 7 divided by 12 plus 11.25 equals 11 and 5 sixths. So the total area bounded by the curve is 11 and 5 sixths. Harder. What do you got to watch out for? The zeros. Okay. Find the finite area bounded by the two graphs. Y equals 2 over X and Y equals X plus X plus Y equals 3. Okay, now we're getting a little bit trickier. What do you, what do you think we should do first? Put them into y equals, always a good strategy. I didn't hear what you said, Cam. What? Okay. 2 divided by x. And x plus y equals 3, so y equals 3 minus x. Okay, is that a good window? Because do you see any area? Now you probably want to use something like, see if that's any better. Better? Yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe threes each. Ah, there we see it. So it wants that shaded area or that area between the, the straight line and the and the reciprocal graph. So we'll draw a little picture here. Of course, not drawn to scale. We need to figure out where these two points are. 
how do we do that? Pardon me? Make them equal to each other. So y equals 2 over x, and x plus y equals 3. If this is an exercise in algebra from math 11, you would see something like this. And then you would see something like this. Yeah. And then this. And lo and behold, so we know our coordinates of intersection. If this is a, if this is a, if that's a no calculator question, you have to do that. If it's with a calculator question, I'm graphing it. And I'm going second trace intersect because I'm done in ten seconds. Yeah, it depends on where it is on the exam. Okay, how do I find the area between those two curves? little problem solving activity. Is there a calculation that will give you that red area? No. You have to do one minus the other one. Okay, which one, is, which one are you going to do first? The straight line. Why? Because it's bigger. Everybody follow that train of thought? You have to do one minus the other. And why do we do the straight line? Because it's got a bigger area. It's taller there, it's higher. It's got more, it's got more bigger y values. More bigger, everybody, more bigger. So we're gonna do the area from one to two of three minus x dx. And we're gonna do the area from one to two of two over x dx. Okay, so the antiderivative of three minus x. 3x minus x squared over 2. And how do we do the area? F how do we do the antiderivative of 2 over x? Yeah. Okay, good good habit. I also would have thought it of it thought of it as this to get you into the right frame of thinking that it's um, 2 times ln x. Now what? Put the twos and the ones in, reach for your calculatrice, and get me an answer. Um, six minus four over two minus three minus one over two. That's the first one. And then it's ln two ln two minus two ln one. So, 6 minus 2 is 4, 3 minus 1 half is 2 and a half, 2 ln 2 is 2 ln 2, 2 ln 1 is 0, ln 1 is 0, 2 minus 0, minus minus 0, I guess that would be plus 0. So 4 minus 2 and a half is one and a half, is it? So one and a half minus two ln two, so 1.5 minus two ln two, one one three seven zero five six three eight. Yeah. That's what is the two ln x equal? It's big f of x, which represents the antiderivative of. Okay. You mean what do you? Okay. So let's all these red lines. Yeah. What you're doing here? Oops. Oh, whatever. Um, so the first antiderivative calculation does this area. 
The second antiderivative calculation does this area. So you, you see the yellow minus the blue gives you just the little bit of yellow that you're interested in. Okay, what about this one? Find the area lying between. Uh, well, the first one is a parabola opening down. Passing through 0 and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We could even find the vertex by taking the derivative and making it equal 0 and finding that point. But we know that it's got to be halfway between. So we'll just leave it like that. And the second one is a parabola opening up, passing through 0 and x minus 2. Something like that. So what point, I still need to find a point. You know they both pass through zero, zero, but we don't know where they intersect. So how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna find this red circle over here? Make them equal each other. Six minus X squared equals. Do you like your X squareds positive or negative? Positive? So that's the coordinate four comma something. So find the area lying between those two curves. How are you gonna do that? How are we going to find the area between those two curves? Well, I'll draw you a picture. You want to do the black area. Minus the blue area. And when you do that, you get and it's, you get this area. So how do you do the black area? Well, you do the antiderivative from zero to four of six x minus x squared. How do you get the, the gray area, the area underneath there? You do minus the integral. You're just always the higher one minus the lower one. Can you finish it from there? Do you want me to finish it from there? Do you want, okay, some people are nodding their head saying quickly do it, okay. So the antiderivative six x is uh, six x squared over two, so that's three x squared minus x cubed over three. We have to be happy that all those zeros in there are gonna make the answer somewhat easier to do. And then minus the antiderivative of one third x cubed minus x squared from zero to four. Oh, I don't want to go any farther than that because I'm lazy. It's just calculator work now. 
Okay, determine the area bounded by e to the negative x, e to the x, and lx equals ln4. So e to the negative x, well, e to the x looks like this. E to the negative x looks like this. And ln4 looks like this. Where do they eat, cross each other? Even though that my drawing is being really crappily drawn. Yes. Zero, one is where they cross. So it wants you to find the yellow area. Set up the problem. Set up how you're going to find that answer. That's almost set up. Need some more. Can you finish it from there? Yes, no. Okay, what's the one on the right say? Find the region bounded by e to the x. Okay, let's draw it. Y equals 1. Okay. Y equals 2. X equals 3. We're going to assume that it's over here, but we don't... I don't know. We'd better draw this to make sure. Now there's no way to draw a vertical line x equals 3, so we'll have to just kind of see where it is. Well, it's, it's quite a distance over, isn't it? Okay, 1, 2, 3, something like this. So it wants this gray area. Mr. Rep, I don't know what to do. What are some good starting points, folks? What? Yeah, you gotta find those X points. You gotta find these points. Before you even start, you need to know where those are. You know their Y coordinates, you don't know their X coordinates. So find those X coordinates. How are you gonna use how are you gonna do that? Either do it graphically or algebraically. Graphically you use the intersection command. Algebraically, you make them equal to each other, right? But you can't make all three equal to each other. You can only do you can only do pairs of them. So do these ones. 1 equals e to the x. Mr. Goddard, can you call the upper campus office? Mr. Goddard, call the upper campus office. Thank I think, you. I think we've already heard that. Anyways. So x equals ln1, that's 0. And then you do the other one. So now you know the two x coordinates. But you still don't okay, you need to do two cal you need to do two calculations to get the gray answer still. Tell me one calculation. What? Okay. Good. What's the area of that? 
Well, what's what's this distance? No, it is not. It's ln two, and this is three. Good. It's three minus ln two is the length. Good. What's this distance? One. So what's the what's that area then? Three minus ln two times one. Right. Okay, what else can you do? I don't pay attention to what you wear. Well, good. <laughs> Who cares? Zero, two, no, not three. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just going to do this bit now. So you're going to go from 0 to ln 2 of e to the x minus, because you got to remember what that's giving you. That's giving you this area. I don't want, I don't want this area included, so what do I have to subtract? Well, you could do the, You could do this. You could do that. Pardon me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's just a rectangle. Mr. Goddard, you have a call on line one. Mr. Goddard, line one. He's a popular guy today, isn't he? Anyways, the antiderivative e to the x is e to the x. We could do exactly what Lucas said, Mr. F, it's just a box, like times width. You don't really need to do the antiderivative. So you could just do ln2 times 1. And that would give you that area. And then you have to add this blue area on, and that gives you the total area of the whole shebang. So you get e to the ln 2 minus e to the 0 minus ln 2 plus 3 minus ln 2. Poor ln 2 looks like she's in trouble today. Get picked on here. 2 minus 1 minus ln 2 plus 3 minus Could ln 2. I. What did you guys do up there this morning? 2 minus 1 is 1, plus 3 is 4, 4 minus 2 ln 2, whatever that answer is. Okay? So that takes us to the end of, I don't know. It's out, I'm doing this out of order because I want to do some stuff that made sense and it was a nice review from Chapter 5. Even though it's not Chapter 5, it's still a nice review from Chapter 5. Here's how you take the antiderivative, blah, 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 blah. Okay, um, I'll stop recording.